see that no, he's feared. Like, I love that. I love a man that can take control and he takes control. Like, I trust him. I don't feel like, oh, he's running our country. It's a scary thing. No, it's not a scary thing. Right. I trust that he has our best interests and he doesn't need to be doing this. He doesn't need to run. He's not a career politician. He is doing this because he truly loves America. And I feel like he's fighting for me and mm. I feel like he's fighting for other Americans. So. Facts. <laughs> All right, guys, we got Lexi here today. Thanks for coming on. Of course. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, what a fun event it's been. It's been a blast. I think it's, even though it's the first one, it's going really well. Oh, this is the first one they've done? Yes. Wow. I thought they've been doing this for a while. No, see, that's how well it's going. Yeah. Well done, whoever's running this. CJ, right? Yes, CJ Shout Pearson. Shout out to CJ Pearson. Pearson. Pearson, yep. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to have him on. He knows a lot, man. He was asking dude. some some really intelligent questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's got like all the policies down. I'm like, dude, I'm always, every time, I told him this today and I feel bad about this, but I'm like... I kind of doubt him when going into something and then we get there and it's he exceeds my expectations. Right. I'm like, you're amazing. You're he's, actually incredible. He's so got that swagger, I'm proud of him. that I'm confidence. Of him. Do you yep. live out here in DC? I do. Nice. How long you been here? Um, a year. Whoa, so brand new. Yeah, I'm a newbie. <laughs> what drew you here? Um, work. I work kind of in the social media space, so you know, came out here and I'm loving it so nice. far. Where'd you come from? Chicago. Oh, it's a little upgrade. Yes. Well, actually, I don't know. Is it an upgrade? Uh, yeah, it's not like a major. It's still a blue city. That's kind of crazy. Right. So, you know, I'm in Old Town Alexandria, though. Actually, I probably shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> <laughs> we could edit that uh, out. <laughs> but <laughs> here's my exact address. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I've done that on a podcast. I know. I'm like, hey, do you want my phone number, too? Yeah, I've said my street number. I'm like, oh, I'm editing that out. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, they're going to come find me. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Vegas, which I don't know if that's a blue city, but. We're a swing state, so yeah, maybe. I feel like, yeah, that's probably, I mean, it's kind of a liberal city, right? Most cities are, which is crazy to me. I know, They've I know. penetrated all the major cities. I know. I don't know how. <laughs> Even colleges. How we're like, allowing this to just continue to go on. Yeah, mm -hmm. blows my mind. But public school, colleges, big pharma, everything's infiltrated. Yep. Yep, it's, it's scary. Insane. Scary times. We need to take it back. <laughs> yeah, even like social media, like my <laughs> censored. Oh, of course. <laughs> and that's the thing is like that's kind of everyone here kind of does very political content. And I am on the fence. I do do some politics, but my whole shtick is like I love fashion and I love just art and just kind of. I, you wouldn't come to my page and think, oh, she's conservative. Mm. So that is kind of the way I like to red pill is people come to my page. They see me and they're like, okay, I like her fashion or she has a cool vibe, whatever. They follow me. And then, bam, I red pill you in my stories. Ooh. So I feel like I reach a different audience. And that's kind of what I like to do. That's kind of my niche or whatever. That's a very unique strategy. So no posts about politics, well, just okay, stories. I do do them sometimes. Like you'll get a rogue one here and there when I'm just – going off or I'm wearing Trump merch or something yeah. like that, then I'll do it. But it's very far and few between. It mostly lives in my stories. So people don't outright know, mm. but then... Well, that's you know. smart because if you did all politics, you'd be shadow banned. Well, that's the thing is that I still get shadow banned. <laughs> I posted like two days ago a Halloween costume that I did when I was Crooked Hi Hillary and my boyfriend at the time was Trump. Oh, that's hilarious. It was incredible. I was wearing like a prison suit. It was a whole thing. I got censored. It like gave me a pop up and it was like, this content is not appropriate, whatever the wow. stupid wording is. And I'm like, really? Well, <laughs> James O'Keefe did his classic undercover interview with a Meta employee. Did you see this? No, I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, it just came out yesterday. And he said, um, basically, if you talk negatively about Kamala, they automatically shadow ban it. Cute. Isn't that wild? Yep. But if you do that about Trump, it won't get Oh, affected. they don't care. They're like, let's blast this. Yeah. So yeah. they have so much power because there's like so many people on the platform. I feel yeah. like that alone could like decide an election. Oh, 100%. Because they don't realize that social media is super powerful and it's reaching that generation that if they're not voting right now, they're the next generation of voters. So those are the people we want to be talking to. So they're getting brainwashed and then they're going to schools and they're all liberal and the college is indoctrinating them in their high school. It's a mess. Yeah, it's tough. You're you're basically fighting against the system your whole yeah, life. And then, exactly. yeah, I didn't break free until probably two, three years ago. Okay. Actually, so no, no, I, I wanted Trump to win the last one. So maybe four years. Okay. But I grew up in Jersey, which is pretty, pretty liberal, I'd yeah. say. So. Took some time, but I feel like a lot of people are still stuck in that loop. I know. Well, that's the hard part is they just kind of, they don't know how to get out and they don't know how to like free their mind. Once they do get there, it's enlightening yeah. and they're, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've been blinded this long. But, and I think there is hope. 
I try to be positive and think that there are people that are going to come out of this still. Um, but it's difficult and it's for a sure. fight. When was that moment for you? How old were you? I mean, I've been like Christian conservative my whole life. Oh, your I whole was life. raised in it. Yeah. And so I very much was in that vein from an early age. And, you know, 2016, 2015, when Trump was announcing, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm an OG Trumper. So wow. I. You're a rare I breed. On, I am a rare breed. I was on board from the beginning. I was like, mm, I want him. I already know. <laughs> There's a lot of people in 16 that did not like him. Oh, I loved him. I was like, this is. I just. The things that people hated about him, I loved about <laughs> him. Like, I loved that he had that just energy that no, he's feared. Like, I love that. I mm. love a man that can take control and he takes control. Like, I trust him. I don't feel like, oh, he's running our country. It's a scary thing. No, it's not a scary thing. Right. I trust that he has our best interests and he doesn't need to be doing this. He doesn't need to run. He's not a career politician. He is doing this because he truly loves America. And I feel like he's fighting for me. And mm. I feel like he's fighting for other Americans. So. Facts. I didn't get that comfort with Biden. Oh my, hello? <laughs> <laughs> like, does Biden even have a sentence? Does he have a thought? None of it. Yeah. It's horrible. Even with Obama, at first I was pumped and then it just dissipated. Yeah, well I feel like Obama like tried, you know, he was very charismatic. And so I think that got a lot of people and there even like conservatives that I know were voting for Obama. Mm -hmm. And so it was definitely, that was his edge, but he sucked. Like he was, he's just as corrupt as all of them. A lot of promises. And there's just a lot of distrust in general with politicians. Yep. But I feel like Trump is at least saying what he's going to do for the most part. Oh, 100%. So and people, like I said, I trust him. So yeah, I mean, I can't think of any other politician that actually does what they say policy wise before the election and then no. actually does it after. I know. And they're actually, again, like fighting for the American people. And I think it's really unique, especially I mean, this election cycle is super different than 2020 and 2016. I feel like this time around, it's not the same. People aren't as afraid to be Trump supporters right. and to wear the merch and to talk about it. It's not the same because you're not getting canceled in the same way you were 2020 or 2016. So it's a different air. And I think that people are really waking up to the fact that America is in trouble and Trump is the one who can fix it. Yeah. It's crazy that it took assassination attempts for people to get there. <laughs> I, I can't like I can't even believe that we're living in a world that that's happening. Yeah I, I Casually mean, too. It's yeah, not like and it's like oh no big deal. It's like oh the man's fighting for his life yeah. every day There's been two that we know of there's probably way oh, more behind the scenes. I'm sure there's a ton going on and it's just It's devastating that it's taking that to wake people up But you know at this point I'm like well whatever it takes we have less than three weeks left so yeah, we're either saving America or America's done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that felt like their last resort because they've tried everything. I know. They banned him. They prosecuted him. Well, it's like they were trying to kill him without actually killing him. And now I feel like they're just guns blazing. <laughs> That's their last resort. I mean, you got them freaking out now. You got Kamala going on Fox News. Who would have thought that would happen? I know. But they, she did horrible. She did pretty bad. I've seen, I haven't watched the full thing, but I've seen some snippets and I'm like, I mean, <laughs> hats off to that guy because she's never been challenged like that before. No, in an interview. she won't answer a question. I'm like, when people tell me that they like her and they're voting for her, I'm like, which reason are you voting for? Because she can't answer a question or because she's a liar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. Mark Cuban's back in her, which is interesting to me because yeah. he's actually like a he's successful such a person. little beta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're not a man. <laughs> I can't go on X without seeing his tweets. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm like, mm, you're so annoying. If he's not going at Trump, he's going at Elon. Yeah. And it's like he, okay, this is, I mean, this isn't really like a thing, but I feel like it's funny to see like he, when he was more manly, I would say, than he is now and all of his beta tendencies and who he's voting for and all the stuff he's talking about, you can see the difference in how he, like his face and like how he, not even like, oh, it's a looks thing. Just how he looks and presents himself is just so different. His energy is so different now than it used to be even four years ago. Mm. It's just a very interesting thing. Like he just looks oppressed in my opinion. Yeah, something happened. It's gotta be personal or some I know. weird stuff behind the scenes. I feel like something happened and now he's all of a sudden a little beta. Yeah, like, maybe hmm. he'll run next election. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> please, <laughs> please Mark Cuban run. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like who Trump put around him. Yes, like all the people. I agree. It's like the dream team. I agree, I agree. At first I was like, Vance, interesting. But then I the saw him at the debate and I'm like, wow, you're actually incredible. And I know why Trump picked you because you were a never Trumper. So you are speaking to those people that are never Trumpers. You're able to bring them in. And I think that that's genius. Facts. And RFK was a brilliant one. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing is like, I think 
what's happening now, like I said, it's a different vibe this election season. And there is some unity happening. And because RFK Jr. and Tulsi and Elon, they're all kind of coming together. It's bringing like momentum and unity. And that, to me, unity is our most powerful tool. Yeah. And that is going to be what saves America. That is the only thing that saves America is when we're unified. Yeah. So they're acting like the more like the Democrat Party than the Democrat Party is acting. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, because they're not even the Democratic Party anymore. They're far leftists. Yeah. It's nuts because when I was growing up it was nothing like this. No. Not, not even at all. close. We were all about family values and stuff. I know. I now know. we're not. And now it's just like what is going on? You want to trans the kids? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like, I don't know what happened. They just got too much money, too much power. It's it's because it's never enough. It's very much like whatever you tolerate increases. So you tolerate a little bit, like you just a little bit, and then it just, you continually want more and more, and it right. needs to be pushed farther. And so now we wake up and we're in this crazy society that nobody even recognizes. Agreed, yeah. Could you date a liberal? Absolutely not. <laughs> There's a literally no way at all. Could never happen. Could never be me. Your parents wouldn't approve. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't approve. <laughs> I cannot do a beta. Like I can't have that beta energy. I need someone who's an alpha and is who going to put me in my place. Let's go. <laughs> it's hard to find an alpha liberal actually now that I think about it. No, they don't exist. I, I'm having trouble thinking of some. I'm no. sure one in a million, but I know. Like there's I'm sure there's some that are a little bit, but then you're like, okay, well, are you a secret conservative? Because I don't trust you're actually a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> for real, yeah. That's tough. So you've yeah. never done it in the past? No, no. Wow, so that's a strict thing for you. No, yeah. You have to align with my values because I very much I these are the thing these are my core beliefs. And just even like Christianity and being conservative, I don't want to, I want to raise my kids in that. Right. So I don't want someone who's not on the same page as me. Obviously, there's going to be differences in some things and that's fine. I like want that healthy camaraderie and debate. Like that's totally fine. But I feel like, no, you cannot be on the other side. Respect. I just can't do it. Have you been to a rally yet? Of course. Which ones? <laughs> I've been going to rallies since 2015. Oh, yeah? Literally like town halls. And, what? I know. I need to get to one. Oh I was going to go to the one in Coachella, but it was three hours from LA. No. So like, okay. Well, you need to come to Madison Square Garden. That's that, going to be insane. October, right? Yeah, 27th. I might have to, might have to come for that. Yeah, I will be It's already that sold one. out though, right? Oh, is it? I think so. Oh, I don't know. Because that's the final one, so. Oh my God, it's the final one. Yeah. It's going to be incredible. That'll be his last one ever because that's his second term. Well, and so. that like actually devastates me when I voted. So I had to early vote because I'm from Chicago and I'm still registered to vote there. So I had to go home and voted this last weekend and it was kind of sad to me. I'm like, mm. I can't believe that I'm voting for the last time for Donald Trump. Like I, I mean, third time's the charm. So let's get him reelected. I'm excited, but it was it was bittersweet. I was so excited to do it, but also yeah. it was kind of sad. Politics won't be the same without him. No, it's gonna it's be- like, It's never gonna be the same. It's gonna be boring, like, know. you know? It's gonna be back to how it used to be. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope that there's people that are coming up, you know, like I think Vance is amazing and hopefully he runs one day. I think he's a little bit more polished. Yeah. So it'll kind of maybe teeter a little bit back, but I still think he's awesome and solid. So yeah, if he could pick Vivek or Tulsi mm -hmm. as VP. I feel like, yeah, there's there's people that are coming in the ranks. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Lexi, uh, if you ran into Trump right now, what would you tell him? <laughs> Literally a dream. Um, I would probably tell him okay well what i would ask him i kind of touched on it a little bit earlier is about unity i would ask him kind of what is what is the thing that is going to bring us all together what is the thing he wants to do to unify us because we already have momentum in that area and it says like in scripture a house divided cannot stand and that a house is a metaphor it's a city a country all of it when we're divided we're not going to be able to be whole and we're going to fall apart so i would love to know his plan for actually unifying us because i think that's where the most power lies and that's how we move forward as a country i love it we'll end it there thanks for coming on thank you yep <laughs>